the Passion Week as we commemorate this day of the crucifixion of Christ. We have the youth who are in the lead this afternoon. And I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whose day we remember on this day as the day of crucifixion. And we are delighted to have the youth in the lead this afternoon. And I'd love to take this opportunity to welcome our brother Abaho Kosea to take the lead as uh, youth engage us in this time of learning more in this period of the person of Christ. Abaho Kosea, you're welcome. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, dear friends. I hope I can be heard and greetings to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to welcome you all for this Good Friday online church of the Church of Uganda lunch hour fellowship. And I hope we are all fine by the grace of God. Even as we reflect on such a day that is so significant in the life of a Christian, God has given us a good time again to worship in his presence and in his house and just send that link to a person out there, to a friend, to a brother, to a sister, to a father or a mother that you don't want uh, to miss this session and tell them that the youth are in the lead, that they do not need to miss any of the action this afternoon. Let us pray even as we start. Father in heaven, we uh, give you praise and worship today for there is none like you. Thank you, Father, for you give us time in your presence to worship you and to come before you with our hearts inclined to you. We know that you are a God who never fails, a God who works strong in us and who never leaves us alone, a God who gives himself for us that we might be cleansed and have a new hope to life. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this fellowship that you've put in our midst. We pray that, Lord, you will give us a good time together, that you will work through the entire team leading this afternoon. You will speak through the preacher, the professor, come at Tennessee, you will speak through, you will, you will work through the choir, you will, you will work through the person doing the session and that, that is taking the reading. You will work through us as a team to bring glory and honor to your whole name. Bless each and every other soul that is yet tuned in here and that that is yet to tune in that we shall all benefit from your presence and your glory shall be upon us. We pray against any powers of hackers and these organizers in your house that, Father, you give us a good environment to worship your holy name, to bow down before you because we know that you are a God who never fails. Watch over us this afternoon and speak to us at an individual basis, but also at a corporate level, that we shall all listen to your voice and hear you because we know that you are a God who works in us and never outside us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and worship you, for there is none like you. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we believe and pray. Amen and amen and amen. Once again, friends, you are welcome uh, to this online church of Uganda. Good Friday, lunch, our fellowship. And we know that God is surely working through us. I want to ask now the person, the group that is leading us in praise and worship that is trending right from uh, Bishop Barham University, led by our brother Caleb Arachiza, to come on and take us through that session as we worship God in songs. Caleb and the team, you are so much welcome. Given to us, and uh, we are here once again to worship the Lord. Can you get me clear? Please tell me if you can get me clear. And uh, I think I'll watch you this afternoon. Is a bit shaky, Caleb. Thank you. 
Is it clear now? Is it clear now? We can get you somehow, but it's not yet as clear as Yes, we can go on with our our shift. Then we go. With that set into zero nine because the rails can test more. Brethren from Bishop Barham University, our colleagues from Bishop Barham University, we cannot hear you well because of connectivity challenges. I will ask um, Kosea and the team on ground to take care of this as um, uh, the team on ground at um, Bishop Barham University rearranges um, uh, for a clear connectivity. Kosea, um, uh, please come on and um, as we uh, get uh, connected back with the team from Bishop Barham University. All right, as we wait for for our friends to come back, uh, to come back online. Uh, let's just continue in that song as they were leading us. God sent his son. Uh, he, his name is Jesus. Let's continue in that song together as we await uh, for them to come back. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, he learned forgive, he bled and died to heal my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I confess tomorrow. Because he lives. For fear is gone, because I know he holds my future, and life is worth a living just because he lives. And then one day, across the river, I fat life's far. No war with death, and then as death gives way to victory, now see the lights of glory, and now know he reigns because he lives. I confess tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone. Because I know. Yes, Caleb, you can you can take it on from there. Oh, I can't wait tomorrow because Thank 
Caleb, Caleb and the team, we can hardly get you clearly. Sorry, Caleb, sorry, I cannot get you clearly. Sorry, Caleb, we cannot get you clearly. Uh, sorry, friends, for the network. Uh, the connectivity from that side is not good. Uh, let's just go on with the fellowship and let's just do a chorus and we shall, we shall go on with the fellowship. Let's just do a chorus of Jesus, keep me near the cross as we continue. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There are precious fountains free to all a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. Father, we thank you for your good and you give yourself to us. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for giving in yourself to us to die for us that we might be saved, that we might find rest in the life that you've given to us. Even as we continue this fellowship, Father, we pray that you give us a good time to fellowship in your presence, that Lord, you alone shall be worshiped and glorified on high. We worship you and give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we believe and pray. Amen and amen. Uh, friends, welcome back from that session. Allow me now welcome our sister Barbara, to come Shava as we're going to the ministry of the world, she's going to take us through today's reading. Barbara, please I'll take it on from there. Um, thank you, brother. Our reading to nine from verse six. Sixteen. We shall read in the name of Jesus. Um, okay, from verse 16. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took charge of Jesus. He went out carrying his cross and came to and came to the place of the skull. As it is called in Hebrew, it is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and they also crucified two other men, one, or one on each side with Jesus between them. Pilate wrote, Pilate wrote a notice and had, it, and had it put on the cross. Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews, is what he wrote. Many people read it, read it 
because the place where Jesus was crucified was not far from the city. The notice was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. The chief priest said to the to said to Pilate, "Do not write, do not write the King of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am the King of the Jews." Pilate answered, "What I have written stays written." After the soldiers had, cru had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one part of each soldier. They also took the rope, which was made of one piece of woven cloth without any seams in it. The soldiers said to one another, let's not tear it. Let's throw, let's throw this to see who will get it. This happened in order to make the scripture come true. They divided my clothes among themselves and grumbled for, in, for my robe. And this is what the soldiers did. Standing close to Jesus' cross, standing close to Jesus' cross where his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Mangled, Jesus saw his mother and the disciple he loved standing there. So he said to his mother, he is your son. Then he said to the disciple, she is your mother. From that time, the disciple took her to, to live in his home. Brother, brothers and sisters, that is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much. Barbara for taking us through the ministry of the word and all friends it is my singular honor to introduce to you our preacher this afternoon our preacher this afternoon is the professor Maud Gamatenes Mujisha she comes to us from Bishop Stewart University where she serves as the vice chancellor and as we share together in the word of God she's going to be talking to us and speaking to us, and I would like you from wherever you are to join me as we welcome the Professor Martin C to speak to us. Hello. Yes, we can get you, Mama. Hello. You can hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Mom. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this online church of Uganda. And I'm very honored. And my family and the university, Bishop Stuart University, that I represent to be here, the minister. We cannot take it lightly, it is by the grace of God. When the Lord God called us, and particularly when he saved me, when I was a little girl in 1983, stranded away from home, and I was primary seven with no hope for the future, the Lord called me, it was not of October 1983, as I've already said. From that time, the plans that were made for me, for my family, from the generations that I had gone through, were all canceled and God and plans for prosperity, plans for the future and plans for being welcome. I count myself as a child of God because of the salvation that God granted me. I know nobody would have ever seen me if it was not at the cross of Calvary. So the topic we are going to share today is really very core to my life and to me as a person, and I believe the Holy Spirit will minister to us. Uh, let us have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. 
We lift your name high and high because you are the God of faithfulness. Thank you for this Good Friday where I am ministering to church, who am I and my family that will be counted worthy to speak, to preach your word and share with brethren wherever they are. We pray that Holy Spirit you come and take over, minister to all of us, minister to the young people, to the old, minister to even my team in Bishop Stuart University, minister to the entire body of Christ wherever they are. Use me as a vessel and speak to your people for your glory. For in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we have prayed. Amen. I, I, I wish to share the screen. Hope it will come. Are we there? Yes, Prof, we can see the screen. Probably you put it in the in the larger mode. You click that. That's down what there. I'm doing. Okay. Now you can see. Yes, please. Very good. Okay. <laughs> As I've already said, that it is by grace of God that I'm here. And our theme today is divine exchange at the cross which is the cross of Calvary, as we have heard from the scripture read by our sister from John chapter 19, verse 16 to 27. And by names, once again, Professor Mauda Kamatanis Mdisha, Vice Chancellor at Bishop Stuart University. And as I've already said, afternoon is not an afternoon. We are celebrating, or oh, we are on Good Friday. And Good Friday means a lot. Others are celebrating Bad Friday, but us we are celebrating Good Friday because Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary. So when we talk about the divine exchange, when we talk about the divine exchange, it is important to note that the Lord and the God of everything did it for us on the cross of Calvary. And it is important to note that it all starts with Christ and it ends with Christ. So divine exchange at the cross was for the redemption of man from born of sin. We have all sinned and fallen short of God's glory. But because of the cross, because of the love of God, that God gave his only son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life as it is in John. And you can see that he paid the price at the cross of Calvary and set man free and set you and me free. So what does this mean? Death and resurrection of Christ is a true exchange of our freedom or of your freedom. Otherwise, death was our sentence. We are meant to die, but because God loved us, sent Jesus Christ to die for us on the cross. And today, as we look at the Good Friday, it is an exchange that was good for you and for me that we may receive redemption. What we have read, what we have seen is that Christ went all through it for the sake of you and me as his children and as his friends and as people who are called by God to have life and have it in eternal. And have life that can make meaning. Now, when you see what does it mean to exchange, what is it that was exchanged? As I've already said, Jesus Christ exchanged our life with his life by dying on the cross of Calvary. And the key thing that we must take off, one, 
The hour of decision is very important. The hour of decision is very important. That one is a, is a pilot. Pilot at the fixed hour handed over Jesus Christ, as you have read from the scripture uh, from verse 16. But if you go to before 16, to verse like 13 down, you see that the option, the people who had celebrated the palm, palm Sunday, who are laying down their clothes, that the, the king of kings has come on the next, next Friday. They were, they were killing him. They were saying, crucify him. So this is mankind. Mankind can make decisions that cannot be permanent. Mankind can take decisions that cannot be trusted. But when we have God, it is very important to know that there is an hour of decision. Like Pilate made a decision at the fixed hour. And at the sixth hour, that's when Jesus Christ was handed over to be crucified. That's why Pilate said, look here is your king. Look here is your king. The king was given unto us, was given to the people who thought were Christians actually, actually were believers because the Pharisees were believers then, but they were fighting a wrong battle and they crucified Jesus. And I can assure you, when it comes the sixth hour, the six as a number stands for things that may not be good or pleasing. But I tell you, when it came the ninth hour, when Jesus Christ gave up his life, it was done on the cross of Calvary and he paid for my sins. He paid for your sins to be redeemed. So we are children who are redeemed by the Lord. And I call upon you this afternoon of a good Friday that we must celebrate in the decision. So why is an hour important? Decision making is very important. There is an hour when you must make a decision. There is that time when you must come and say, Christ, I have for you, I need you as my Lord and Savior. And I can tell you a great exchange will be done in your place and in my place. Number two, when you read the scriptures, it is clear that there was witnesses, there are witnesses who saw the death of Jesus Christ, who went all the way with him, and women were among the witnesses. You know what had happened? The disciples had fallen off. But there were these people, the ones that are regarded as weak, but as far as spirituality is concerned, God can count on anybody. When it comes the hour of decision making, you need to be counted on. Women were counted on, and we can see the fall of Christ up to the extent of crucifixion. They were, and even at his resurrection, the women were part and parcel. That is something very serious to us as children of God to know, to note that it is paid, and Christ is able to do much more than we can imagine. And I want to point it out that when the exchange was done and Christ died for us, man received redemption at the cross. The women who came, the women who witnessed him never remained the same. And as we see now, we see we people who have been delivered and set free. I'm trying to move down. Uh -huh. Marcel, women were at the far front of the last office of Christ. Why is it very important on a good Friday like this to know that there is a great point in decision making? When you choose to follow Christ, when we are here talking about Good Friday, it would have been a Black Friday or a Bad Friday, but it's because there is a decision that was made. When we talk about the last office, we mean the last office, the office of crucifixion, the women were able to go there. And I want to really encourage and point on women who are there, rise up and be true witnesses of Christ. We see women like who were despised, 
they were even there when Jesus Christ was being crucified for me and for you. And it is very important to note that God does not despise. If you have been there despising yourself, if you have been there feeling low, and particularly we use women to symbolize those who are weak, those who feel they are unable, those who feel they are unworthy. God can call anybody and use them. So women who are there at the far front, even at the last office of Christ, you can be there, Christ can be there for you, even when nobody considers you, even when situations have come tough, even when you feel you are not loved, I can assure you the Holy Spirit is there to enable you to move up and you will be used like the way you see women like Mary Magdalene were used. Prostitutes like Rehab were used to in the days of Joshua. It is possible that God can make a difference because there was an exchange for you. Brethren who consider the word exchange, continue to examine. Exchange was, the exchange was made at the cross of Calvary. The exchange was made at the cross by Jesus Christ. So the meaning and the, and the purpose of his death on the cross was for you and for me to procure your pardon, procure your deliverance and healing. So when we talk about people like Mary Magdalene, it means a lot that those who have gone to Christ will cause transformation. Mary Magdalene, the woman who was a prostitute, who had seven demons, they were chased. Right now, she is at the far front of Christ's ministry. So you can be at the far front of Christ's ministry if you choose to come out and work for him. Number four, sacred followers of Christ. They had to come out. There are sacred followers of Christ. And as we speak now, there are very many people who say, me, I'm a Christian, me, I am saved, me, I remain in my own way. They don't want to come out. But on a good Friday, sacred followers of Christ had to come out. The clear example was Joseph of Arimathea. He was following Christ, but was fearing others. You could be there, you are fearing to walk back. You are fearing that you will be compromised. You are fearing that you will fail, you will not stand and measure, measure up as a Christian. The Lord is telling you at the cross of Calvary, there was an exchange made for you and for me. Therefore, you can stand out and be like Joseph or Arimathea, even Nicodemus. We see Nicodemus who had come at night to, to, to listen to Christ. He was a follower of Christ, but from a distance. Actually, he was following Christ when you read about Nicodemus, but he never wanted to be counted. He feared his friends. Some of us, we are fearing people. We are fearing taking decisions but great exchange was done for you and for me. Better come out if you are a Nicodemus. And I know there are very many people are Nicodemus and they don't want to be counted, but the Lord is telling you at the cross of, of Christ, come out. Because sacred followers actually came out. That's why we see Joseph of Arimathea is being counted and is being portrayed as one who came out at the, bar, at the death of Christ because he was a follower of the Lord. So what does that mean? That at the cross of Calvary, the exchange is that there is boldness. You don't have to live a life that is counterfeit. You don't have to live a life that will remain there that cannot glorify the Lord and the God who called you. He's calling upon you, come out and become a true follower of the Lord. Great exchange indeed was made for you and for me. Therefore, it is your time, it is my time that as we reflect today, why you have been a sacred follower of Christ. When they call about Christians and you are in a Christian group, you come up. When they talk about Christianity, when you are people who don't believe, you shy away, you also join their conversations. It is high time you come out of your hiding place that this will make a difference in your life because Christ did it for did it and for me. There was a great transaction in my place and in my place. Why a great transaction? There were people like Doubting Thomas. People like Doubting Thomas, those who doubted. Actually, Thomas was a follower. He was a believer. He was a, a disciple of Christ. But time came when he doubted. He said, is it true really that Christ resurrected? Not until he touched him and he saw that there was 
that actually Christ resurrected when he saw where they had pierced. I can assure you, brethren, and particularly the young people who are there, there is great transaction for you. If you are doubting the things of the Lord, you know that God is true. When you see a person like Mao Daisia talking to you, you know that God is not a respect of persons. And if you are doubting, even if you have been weak, even if you have been there rejected, the Lord can lift you up and use you faithfully. So there is a serious call on you, which is number five. Christian's call is for friendship. Christ is calling you for friendship. His call is a purpose, is purpose, is purposeful and is for you to receive what he has promised. And I want to really call upon you, brethren, that if you find it very hard to make a decision for the Lord, it is high time that you know Christ is not there as a judge, but he's there as a friend. He's there as a friend. He's there as someone who called you, who called me, and for a purpose. Therefore, it is already done, as it is in John. Uh, John clearly put it, that we are not slaves. Because a slave does not know what a master does, we are friends. And Jesus Christ did it on the cross of Calvary. So when you talk about this good Friday, keep celebrating what the Lord has done for you and for me. So what does it call for? What can we do? Some people keep asking, what do we do? How do we go about it? How can I measure up? The Lord Christ did it. The only thing is to believe. Believe, believe, and believe. Children of the Lord, the Lord is calling upon you to believe. In John chapter 19, which you have read, verse 30, the message is clear that we ought to believe in Christ and it is done. You can see when Jesus Christ had tested it, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and raised his spirit. This is a very great statement for each one of us. Your case is finished. The price was paid. I love this song, Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all, or to him I owe. He gave up his spirit, his very cardinal, for you and for me. What does that mean? That if Jesus Christ did it for you, on the cross of Calvary, and it is finished for you. You don't have to look at yourself as wretched. You don't have to feel low. You don't have to, to downplay yourself. You could be the one the Lord is speaking to. Those that you know in your family, the bondages that have tied you, that have tied your family, the bondages of poverty. It could have been misled. It could be that you have failed. You have fallen short. The Lord is speaking to you and to me that it is finished. The price was paid at the cross of Calvary as it is in John 19, verse 30. Therefore, come out. Something cardinal means it is very important. Jesus Christ gave up his spirit that you may take it up. Jesus Christ gave up his spirit for you and for me. And when you go to John, 1 John chapter 5, verse 6 and 7, it talks about the three witnesses. The three witnesses, which is the spirit that Jesus Christ had given up for you to take. It is an assurance and a guarantee that you are a child of the Lord. And then water and the blood. What joy, what powerful statement. There are three witnesses that you must know as a child of God. The spirit which Jesus Christ but dwells and lives with you. Then there was water and the blood. When we talk about water, when we read John 1934, the chapter we are on, water and the blood signify a lot. In the blood, there is cleansing. And in water, we receive cleansing too. There is purification. There is repentance. There is forgiveness. Child of the Lord, if you know you are there, you feel you are far from the Lord. The Lord is speaking to you and to me that he can forgive you 
and give you another chance. There is cleansing. You need the blood of Jesus Christ, which washes as white as snow. That is the paradox that in the blood of Jesus Christ, we are washed as white as snow. Of course, you all know blood. If blood can wash as white as snow, there is no any other blood but the blood of Jesus Christ. There are, there are other blood. There is other blood. The blood of cows, the blood of sheep, the blood of goats, the blood of human beings that is being shed left and right. But all those ones cannot purify you. Neither can they cleanse you. It is only the blood of Jesus Christ. All other blood is wicked blood. But the blood of Christ is the blood that cleanses us. And therefore, brethren, as we think to of Good Friday, when the blood and the water that came from the ribs of Christ comes and touches you, you will be cleansed, I'll be cleansed, I'll be purified. And only repentance and forgiveness will come your way, will come my way. And Revelation clearly points it out. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. We can read it. Revelation. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. It talks about the blood of the Lamb and their testimony. Today, the Lord is calling you and me that you ought to stand out and know that the blood of Christ and your testimony is the powerhouse of a believer. Let me read the verse. And they, and they have de de defeated him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their, their lives so much that, that they were afraid to die. What does that mean? That a believer, you and me, you must stand out to be counted because the blood of Jesus Christ, when you say the blood of Christ, actually the mere mention of the blood of Jesus Christ, the demon is free. The devil take away. He runs away and is defeated. So they defeated the devil. In Revelation, the, the children of God, they were able to call upon the blood of Jesus Christ that we have already talked about for cleansing, for purification, that will protrude our forgiveness on the cross of Calvary and the word of their testimony. There is power in giving the testimony. Brethren and children of God, if you are there, take it that you ought to give a testimony of what God has done for you. Because sometimes we stand there and we start assuming, or we fear, let me tell you, there is power in the testimony. It's a powerhouse. Testimony and the blood of Jesus Christ is a powerhouse. And already, all of this is guaranteed by the Holy Spirit, whom we have seen the three witnesses. At least when you leave this uh, teaching, you know that there is the Spirit as a witness. The Spirit dreads in you, lives with you and is there to help us, but there is power of water and the blood, which is only procured from Christ. What a great message for us that this season, we must know who God is and what he did for us to procure our salvation, a great exchange. Our core theme is the great exchange. There was a transaction at the cross of Calvary and that's what the blood of Jesus Christ, blood of the lamb that was slain on the cross of Calvary is important. And the word of their testimony, the testimony gives us deliverance. The testimony builds fellowship. The testimony even enables you to remain true to him. As I've already said, like a person like me, if it was not by the power of the Lord, if God had not picked me as a little girl, her press there, making me what I am, making me dine with kings and queens right now, I wouldn't be here. There is power in the word of the Lord. There is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. You have a testimony. You have a testimony. Even if you are going through a test, you know, the time of a testimony, it is powerhouse of a believer. And then John, first John chapter five, verse 12. This is a clear, a clear message for all of us. Christ, has been for all, for all of us. So it is, is who, whoever has son has life. 
And whoever does not have the son does not have life. So brethren, if you know you are there, you could be counterfeit. You could be seen, you are in choir, you are reading, you are wherever you are. But if you don't have the son, you know you don't have life. Because the proper transaction and the blood we are talking about, the spirit we are talking about, the water that cleanses is only procured in Christ. Whoever has the son has life. If you don't have the son, you don't have life. Therefore, that's why some issues of Sabbath keep coming up. But I can tell you that the Holy Spirit is there to guide you to know that sometimes people are saying, what is so special? Sabbath is more important than Sunday. Let me tell you, the days are both important. All these are divine days. But God does not glory in works. The works are very important. The works God appreciates. But I can tell you, salvation is only procured through Christ, our Lord and Savior. And on Sunday, the first day of the week, when he's erected, that's when we as, we as children of the Lord will receive our If you are there, do good works as Sabbath declares. But you need to know that Christ is the one, the owner of Sabbath. So great transaction is done. And as we celebrate Easter, it's a very special day. We are actually called Christians because of this Easter Sunday. That's where Christ, where we have, where we all lean, where we all think resurrected from the dead, overcame. And therefore, you can stand up and say, my Redeemer liveth. And when challenges come, you'll be able to be counted among the number. You'll be able to be counted among the number and the Holy Spirit will continue to, 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 to speak to you, give you guidance and provide for you. Uh, I'm nearing the end, but there is something that is very, There is some the, the issue of why were we chosen? Why were you chosen? Why do you think Christ had to die on the cross for you and for me? It is for a reason. It is for a reason and it is for a purpose. Uh, the the want to think out you are chosen to bear fruit number one you are chosen to bear fruit and the fruit that can live forever you are chosen because christ had to do it for you as it is in john chapter 15 verse 7 to 8 bear my fruit you are called to bear my fruit and a fruit that will last. The slide has come. And brethren, the Holy Spirit is pointing you unto me that if you know you are not yielding, you are not in God's vineyard, it is very important that you go back on the call of Christ. Why were you chosen to bear much fruit? Number two, you are an ambassador of Christ. You are an ambassador an ambassador who is not ashamed. So whatever we do, wherever we go, even at home, even in this season of Christmas, even when situations are tough, even when challenges come your way, you know that you are Christ ambassador. And therefore, you must live a life that can give God the glory. And Christ ambassador, it means you have the face of Christ wherever you are. Even when challenges come, continue to call upon him. The Lord will support you and will support you. Three, live as people of purpose and vision. Brethren, it is important to have a vision, to have a purpose. People perish for lack of vision. People, the young people are perishing now for lack of vision. When they are in sports, you think sports is all about your life. It is okay to go and do sports. 
it is okay to listen to music, but see what is being, what is portrayed on the market. You see what is there. Actually, these days, when you talk about church music, people are running away, they say, okay, church music, yes, we can only listen to it in church. And then you find many people are lured into the wrong things. But if you live by purpose and vision, whether mature, whether youth, I can tell you, you'll be able to serve God's vision and you will not lack and you will not perish because Christ is there for you. The other point, we are joint heirs in the kingdom. This is a very important point, why you are chosen, why Christ had to do the transaction. You are, very, you are a joint heir in the kingdom. What does that mean? We are sons and daughters to inherit, to inherit eternal life, to inherit the godly things, to inherit the things of God. And actually, we were discussing some time ago, it is important that we parents would better stop the business of saying it is mine, my property, mine and my wife, it is mine. Actually, the Lord has been teaching us over time that things must change. Why must they change? If you are to inherit the, king, the kingdom of heaven and we are children of God, or we are brethren of Christ, and also we are friends of Christ, therefore our children who are heirs to our property, they must know what we are doing. Like us who are children of God, we must know what Christ expects of us to become his heirs. Therefore, teach sense, teach responsibility, teach integrity, teach ownership and stewardship to our children. We cannot disown our very own. Therefore, if God has said we are joint heirs in the kingdom, therefore, our children, our sons and daughters are also co-heirs with what we are doing. What does that mean? That things of God, we cannot just delegate them and we say, it is okay, my children can live the way they want. No, let us speak to them, pray for them, bring them. And as we have a role like in Christian institutions, it is important to must walk the talk because we are joint heirs in the kingdom. Someone who is a joint heir, it means you are partaking what they are doing. If you are part of the kingdom of God, we must do what the Lord and the God wants us to do. And in the Lord, there are things we must do. Right now, we need to speak sense to our youth. We need to speak sense to tell them that corruption is evil. It is not godly if you are to be joint heir. It is important to teach them about stewardship, things that are going to promote the kingdom of God as we celebrate the death of Christ on the cross of Calvary. That to be a joint heir, we need this. We need integrity, we need ownership, and we need to take responsibility of the things of God. And I can assure you, the Lord will use me and you. So Jesus Christ went all the way, learned from him and learned to do what the Lord says, what the Lord wants from us and from me. I believe that the Holy Spirit is enabling us to understand his ways. And as I near conclusion, I want to, I want to say that Christ is the Lord and Savior, receive forgiveness. Christ, or accept Christ as Lord and Savior and receive you and my forgiveness. You cannot afford to miss a good Friday when Jesus Christ did the transaction on the cross of Calvary and just go empty handed. And as a co heir of the kingdom, you must have Christ. Therefore, receive him as Lord and Savior and you receive your forgiveness. Number two, those who trust in him cannot lack or get disappointed. If you think that those who follow Christ will lack, there is a testimony. I have never seen people who are following Christ have been abandoned. Neither actually in Psalms, uh, 20, uh, Psalms 37 verse 25 declares that I've never seen people who follow the Lord, they're lacking. I've never seen their children being abandoned and neither lacking bread. You will not lack bread because you have followed Christ. You will not be disappointed because Christ will actually give you more and will stand out to be counted. Number three, the path 
of righteous entails patience and waiting on God in prayer. Brethren, we ought to pray. We ought to pray, we ought to depend on him. Isaiah 40, 30 to uh, verse 30 to 31 declares it that even the youth can grow weak and even get tired. Even young people will get exhausted. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. And even when they walk, they will not faint. To the love of the Lord, you will not faint because Good Friday means a lot for you and me. The transaction that was done, which is death and resurrection of Christ is our only hope in eternity. And therefore, God calls upon you that the divine exchange that was done for you and for me better receive deliverance in his name. And when you have been delivered and when you have received Christ, it will all be well with you. You will not lack, you will not fail, you will not faint. Even when you walk, even when you stumble, even when things become bad, the whole there. And the God of heaven and earth will always be with you. I want to say thank you very much for listening and thank you very much for giving us the child of the Lord. You will not lack. The Holy Spirit let him minister to you, minister to me for his own glory. Thank you very much, all of you who have listened in. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, children of God. Thank you for this season of Easter and to know that Christ paid it for you and for me on the cross of Calvary. May God bless you and let us pray. Father. Amen and amen. And amen, thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Maud, for speaking to us so powerfully. And the word of God has come so powerfully to us. So, friends, as we continue in the time of prayer, let me ask uh, our sister Priscilla to lead us in that session as we reflect on the word that has been shared to us. Priscilla. Yes, praise the Lord. Let me hope I'm being heard. Yes, we can get you. Please go on. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the love you have shown to us. We thank you for the powerful message that has come through your, your servant, O oh Lord. We thank you, Lord, for always reminding us of your faithfulness, for always reminding us of your love care and protection thank you for sending your dear son jesus to bear our pain and our shame and our agony so that we may be free from all that king of glory we thank you lord for that much much praise you paid for us king of glory and we ask you to forgive us wherever we have forgotten that your death meant all that was taken from us king of glory Father, forgive us where we've not acted as your chosen servants, where we've not acted, Lord, as you please. Lord, forgive us and help us at all times to be true witnesses of your word, King of glory, to be true witnesses that you died to save us and we live according to that, King of glory. Help us not always to be ashamed, King of glory, or scared by situations around us so that we can deny you, so that we can betray you, Lord, Father, always help us to be faithful to you. Help us to defeat the enemy, King of glory, in any way it comes, in through any temptations it may pass through, oh Lord, help us to defeat it. And Lord Jesus Christ, as you said, when you took that bit, bitter wine, Lord, you said it is finished. Lord, take away all the bitter situations in our lives, oh Lord, so that King of glory in everything we go through, we may always remember that it is finished. You took it all. When we bring it to you in prayer, Lord, you can bear it. Father, we thank you for always reminding us that you are a faithful Jesus. You are a faithful God, O oh Lord. Thank you for the message. Thank you for your wonderfulness. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. We thank you for loving us this much. We have prayed believing in you and trusting through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen and amen. Uh, thank you so much, Priscilla, for leading us in that session of prayer.
Uh, let me now, friends, uh, welcome Reverend God, who is going to lead us in the time of uh, notices and the benediction. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. I would love to uh, take this opportunity to thank the team for this lunch hour fellowship. But first of all, in a special way, I want to give thanks to the Lord for enabling us to go through this week, the person week as we are coming closer to the end of it. And particularly on this day, uh, in the person week, today is the day when Christ was scourged and uh, finally crucified on the cross. And we shall be entering in a moment of silence tomorrow until the resurrection day on Sunday. I would love to secondly to thank God for having used uh, his daughter, Professor Maud Kamatenensi Mujisha for bringing forth his word, particularly on this topic of divine exchange at the cross on this day that is very memorable in our lives and in the life of all the Christians. Sadly, I would love to thank the team of the youth that have taken lead this afternoon to lead us, Brother Kosea and the rest of the team members. Thank you so much for leading us very vigorously. And fourthly, I would love to appreciate all the members who have attended this fellowship on this day. And thank you for connecting with the friends always to see that we are one uh, in our lunch hour fellowship. Now, brothers and sisters, this week has come close to the end. On this particular day, we have had already Professor Maud speak to us, beginning right away from Monday, from Bishop, then Reverend Tusubira, then Council Jackie and Reverend Benon, uh, Dr. Benon, having shared with us. Now we are going to sum it up tonight in an overnight prayer. And in this overnight prayer, we shall be having our very own who shall be leading us in the session of overnight prayer. Um, that will be Reverend Canon Dr. John Senyoni and the Mrs. Peace Feta who will be taking us throughout this session to climax this person week where we shall pray for specifics, but also to thank the Lord for the divine exchange on the cross. And our friends, having said this, we shall be launching in a new week very soon. And yet another lineup of the chosen servants of the Lord who shall be feeding us next week we shall be looking at the resurrection power, which will be our main theme from Monday up to Friday in the overnight. The ladies and the gentlemen you see on the screen shall be taking us through um, the word of the Lord as we get to know more about the resurrection power of Christ. Now I will not go into details of their names, but please take a screenshot not somewhere so that you may not miss these servants of the Lord when they come to share the word of the Lord with us next week. Now we come close to um, we come close to the end of our fellowship, but this is just a reminder that uh, we have our daily programs early in the morning, which run every day from. Monday to Friday, we have morning devotions from 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. in the morning. And, 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 and on Monday, we have what we call Women Connect program, which runs from 7 to 8 p.m. East African Standard Time. And then Tuesday, we have Men's Fellowship from 7 to 8 p.m. the same time. Thursday, we have Family, family Life Hour whereby we have different speakers who come to equip us on how to deal with the family related affairs also from 7 to 8 p.m. And on Friday, always we have the overnight. And Saturday, tomorrow, every Saturday we have children's session 
We have the Teenagers Fellowship and the Youth Chat. All these sessions begin from 11 a.m. That's for the children to meet today. Teenagers from 2 to 2.45 p.m. Then 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. we have the youth. Friends, as we do this, putting it in mind that we continue to serve the Lord with all that what he has gifted us so that we may serve him without any without any grumbling and all that. We need to support this work, this ministry that God has given to us in our time. And here are the details of where we channel our givings to support the work that the Lord has given to us in this generation. Please, you may use Airtel, Merchant Code being reflected on the screen, or you may use M MTN Mobile Money using that same numbers are written on the screen. And the names are Lydia Nabunya Nsale Chitaimwa. When you are channeling in your giving. Having said that, once again, I would love to appreciate you. And in a special way, I would love to again ask our team leader today, Brother Kosea and Sister Claire, to take note of the visitors who have worshipped with us on this day. If they are visitors who have worshipped with us on this day, please put your digital hands up or signal us so that uh, Brother Kosea and uh, Sister Claire may easily uh, come close to you and uh, bring you close to the family of Online Church of Uganda. Okay, if they are there, please put up your hand so that we will be in position to see you and uh, introduce you to the family. Okay, it seems to be today we do not have visitors, but let us climax the day this way with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are thankful unto you for this wonderful experience of getting to know about your divine exchange on the cross for us. You paid it all for us by dying on the cross so that we may be reconciled back to our father with whom we had lost the relationship. Tonight, we have heard how I pray that if there is anyone among us who do not have that a personal relationship with you, may this be a divine opportunity for him or for her to come to the saving knowledge of you, Christ. May it be a divine moment for him or for her to get connected unto you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Father, that you alone is our hope. And that's why we are gathered here and to thank you. As we commemorate this day, I want to thank you for our brothers and sisters tonight here. And I thank you for everyone. But above all, may we all have that in mind that you paid it all for us on the cross. And we thank you for having used your servant to deliver this Lord unto us as a remembrance to us who already have that personal relationship with you. Help us to continue to work out our salvation with the fear and the trembling so that we may not miss the final prize of eternal life in paradise with you when the time comes. But thankful Lord unto you. Now I pray that you bless the offerings that we have given this day in order to, to continue to propagate your kingdom as we occupy the cyberspace with gospel. We are thankful, Lord, unto you. Now I pray as we leave this fellowship, may the good Lord bless you. My brothers and sisters, may he continue to watch over you and may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and may he be gracious on you and look kindly on you and give you peace, that divine peace which only comes from him. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may these blessings be upon you, remain among you now 